Hi, and welcome to the Mayor's Report. I'm Northampton Mayor David Narkowitz, and this is my monthly television program on Northampton Community Television, where I try to report to the residents of Northampton on the issues and projects that we're working on on your behalf. This episode I wanted to devote primarily to the city budget. Uh, which is one of the, the major things that I've been working on over the last several months. Uh, and last week, I presented uh, my proposed FY 2014 uh, budget to the City Council, as I'm required to under the Northampton Charter. Uh, and as part of that, I uh, delivered a budget message to the City Council in which I outlined some of the key parts of the budget. I want to just talk quickly about the physical aspects of the budget. Um, we've tried to add a lot of de detail uh, into the budget. We did that last year. We've tried to add more detail this year. Um, so this budget contains not only all the revenue and expenditures that we've used to create the budget, we also have uh, departmental budgets that show uh, each department how many staff they have. It shows historically how their budget has changed, for example, from last year to this year. Um, it also provides information on the enterprise funds for water, sewer, and for solid waste. Um, for the first time, we now have the two uh, school budgets are in here, the school budgets for the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational and Agricultural High Schools. Uh, those were actually voted on earlier this year as part of the Charter's new financial process, which requires uh, those, the Board of Trustees and the School Committee, uh, to vote on their budgets and submit them to the Mayor before I submit my budget to the City Council. We also have a capital plan. Uh, which talks about some of the investments we want to make in, in our buildings, in technology, in vehicles, etc., um, as well as the actual budget orders are in the rear of the, uh, of the book, which these are the actual orders that the City Council will have to vote on uh, to actually enact this budget. Um, and the City Council will be holding hearings on this budget uh, uh, in the month of May and June, uh, also as required by the Charter. Um, in terms of the size of the actual budget, this is a $96,262,079 budget, total budget, that's the general fund as well as the enterprise funds. That represents a 0.6% increase over last year's FY13 budget. Um, as many of you have followed, as I've done my uh, town hall budget meetings around the city over the last several months, we are facing a $1.4 million gap, uh, and that's a gap in providing level services. So the, levels, the services that we provided in FY13, in order to provide those same services um, in FY14 starting on July 1st, uh, the, the amount of revenues that we're receiving uh, versus the amount of expenditures we would need to make to provide those services don't align. We have a $1.4 million gap. And so as a result of that, the budget that I'm putting forward uh, does contain significant cuts uh, to both city and school operating budgets. And these include the elimination of uh, over 15 full-time equivalent positions, uh, cuts to maintenance and supply budgets, and reductions in service capabilities across all of our departments, public safety, uh, public works, education, recreation. Um, in our police department, for example, uh, this budget calls for the elimination of four full-time police officers, uh, which will have a significant impact on their operations and ability to staff their 24-7 operations. The public schools, uh, which is our largest city department, will see some of the deepest cuts, not only in staff, in teachers, in aides, uh, but also in uh, core programs like arts, music, libraries, um, as well as we'll see increases in fees for sports and for busing, um, with regard to busing to the high school, this budget would propose to eliminate busing to the high school, again, as we're trying to maintain core educational services uh, with limited amount of revenue. Um, so as you know, I, uh, I did propose to the City Council uh, a Proposition 2.5 override. Uh, that override will go before the voters on June 25th. 2013, a special election. It's actually the same day as the special U.S. Senate election to fill the vacancy uh, created by Senator Kerry becoming Secretary of State. So on that same day, uh, the voters of Northampton will have a question on uh, the city ballot. 
uh, that will ask them whether or not they will allow the city uh, to raise an additional $2.5 million in revenue uh, for city and school operating budgets. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that particular proposal as well, um, because I know that I've heard concerns about uh, uh, whether that $2.5 million, uh, wh why that number versus the $1.4 million budget gap. And one of the goals in putting forth that number was not only to try to solve the gap that we face uh, in this particular uh, budget year, but to really come up with a multi-year plan for using that additional revenue and showing the taxpayers that we could use that revenue to create, uh, to create the capacity to maintain level services uh, over uh, not just FY14, but over the following three fiscal years as well. Um, so I want to spend some time going through that. Before I do that, though, I do want to talk about uh, this issue of this gap. Um, and really, it's a structural gap uh, between the revenues and the expenditure side of our budget. Um, on the general fund side, for example, um, over half of the increases in our general fund expenditures are fixed costs. They're costs that we have no choice. We have to make those expenditures. Uh, for example, one of, the, one of the largest ones, 256000 plus, um, is an abatement that we have to pay to the Verizon Corporation uh, from a 2009 appeal that they made uh, to the state's um, uh, tax board uh, for property taxes that were imposed on, on their facilities. We also have to make a contribution of, of over $240,000 to our retirement account. Again, this is a requirement that we have to keep that system fully funded. We're also increasing uh, funding to meet the needs for veterans' benefits. Uh, our appropriation to Smith Voke is increasing. Um, Charter school, school choice, and other state assessments are also going up as well. Um, so these are some of the areas of fixed costs uh, that, that are driving uh, this budget gap. One area that I am pleased to report that we've made, I would say, historic progress on in this year is health insurance. Health insurance has been uh, one of the largest cost drivers of our budget over the last decade. Uh, and this year, at the beginning of our budget process, we were facing another significant increase uh, that was actually showing our budget gap at about $2.5 million just because of that additional uh, revenue needed to pay for health insurance. Um, so this spring, uh, I, I asked the city council, uh, well, actually last year I asked the city council to adopt a state law that allowed us to use a new process for negotiating health insurance, including the ability to look at the state's uh, Group Insurance Commission, or GIC, health plan. And so I did announce uh, this spring uh, that I would be proposing to move the city's health insurance plan uh, from our current provider into the state's GIC plan, and that that was going to create over $1 million worth of savings in our health care uh, for 2014. Um, we have actually uh, moved forward with that. We had negotiations uh, over the last several weeks with uh, the, um, the presidents of our uh, employee unions, and we reached agreement uh, last week, actually, um, to actually move forward with that. So in January, on January 1st, 2014, the city will join several other uh, cities and towns across the state in moving our health insurance uh, to the state's health insurance plan. And we believe that's going to save us. It's definitely going to save us money um, in FY14. And for example, in FY14, instead of our health insurance costs going up by almost 7%, they're actually going down by 0.7%. So that move to the GIC uh, is going, I believe, is going to save us money, obviously not only in FY14, but we hope long term in terms of keeping that major uh, cost driver under control. Uh, there's also another major issue in terms of, uh, in terms of the structural deficit, and that's the increase, uh, that's state aid, frankly, and the fact that state aid um, has gone down um, precipitously over the last 10 to 12 years. Our state aid is projected to increase this year uh, slightly, about 1.5% or about $150,000, but it's still $1.1 million less than it was just five years ago. 
Uh, and, and, and if you look at it over the last 12 years, uh, if you look at where state aid was in 2002 versus where it is today, if it had just remained level funded over that period, that would have meant an additional $35 million uh, in state aid that we would have had available to us, which would have meant less reliance on property taxes uh, and less of these budget crises that we seem to be having uh, from year to year. Um, another factor with state aid is, of course, the increases in charter school tuition and school choice for children that either choose to go to charter schools or choose to choice out to another district. That has been another major uh, cost driver in these budgets, and, and we, um, we've, we've shown people historically how those costs have gone up again over the last 10-year period. So those are some of the big issues that we're facing. Obviously, I've put forward this budget, um, and this budget assumes no new revenue. Uh, it assumes only the revenue uh, that is available to us. But because of the significant cuts that are contained within it, particularly public safety and to our schools, I felt it was important to put the question to the voters of, do we want to spend additional revenue to close that gap to maintain the level services that we have as well as provide a path forward over the next four fiscal years to maintain those level services so that we don't find ourselves back in this position year after year. So now I want to show you that proposal that I put forward to the council and just walk you through that briefly. So I have a chart here, and this is actually a chart that I presented to the city council when I put forth the uh, order for the proposed uh, 2.5 million Proposition 2.5 override. And what we've tried to do all on one sheet here, and we've blown it up big so that people can see it easier, um, is to really show people how that $2.5 million uh, general operating override would be used to not only help us close the budget gap in 2014, but allow us to maintain level services over the next uh, three fiscal years as well. So the chart is laid out with different columns. We've got FY 2014, which is the proposed uh, fiscal year that we're immediately talking about. And then there's columns for 15, 16, 17, and on to 18. Uh, so it's a five-year uh, plan that we've put forward. Um, here in yellow, you can see uh, this is $2.5 million. And this is basically, um, you know, we have the base levy, uh, the base tax levy from the previous year. Uh, we're allowed to add 2.5% growth to that by law. This would be, uh, if the voters give us permission on June 25th, adding an additional $2.5 million in revenue, um, as well as the new growth that we're allowed to add as well. Um, and so we would use this additional revenue to be able, uh, together with the um, other revenue that we're anticipating, uh, whether it's uh, from hotel motel taxes, whether it's from ambulance receipts, uh, whether it's from Chapter 70 school aid, et cetera, um, to be able to close that budget gap, uh, that $1.4 million budget gap, provide the level services that we want to provide. Um, and the way that we would allocate the $2.5 million is we would, uh, and I have it listed out here, $726,285 of it would go to city departments. Again, that would be to help us uh, close that gap in the police department, public works, uh, across all city agencies. A million of it would help us uh, uh, deal with the gap in our public schools. And then that would actually leave $773,715. And we would actually put that money in something we are going to call an override stabilization account. This would be a separate standalone account that that additional revenue would be placed in. And because it would be a stabilization account, uh, no one can touch or spend that money without a two-thirds vote of the city council. Uh, so then we would, we would then move on to FY 2015. We've tried to build in very conservative estimates for what we project revenue uh, to be uh, in FY 2015, and we've used historical data uh, over the last several years to try to project that. We then look at our operating budgets, and we've tried to estimate what we believe is a reasonable level of growth uh, to assure that we can continue to provide level services from year to year. 
Um, and it's not one size fits all. So general government, for example, uh, human services, culture and recreation, we're showing about a 2.75% growth pattern. Um, for things like public safety and public works, uh, which are either more people intensive or uh, in the case of public works, more capital and supply intensive, um, we have slightly different projections, 3.1% and 3.1% uh, yeah, for those two. Education, which is our largest city department and where we often see the largest areas of growth, um, we're projecting 3.9% growth. So using, uh, again, the new revenue in 2014, we would then finish uh, FY 2015 um, and we would, uh, we would then have the ability to not only provide the level services, but then we would have a surplus of about $458,876, uh, which we would again put into that override stabilization account. And you can see down here at the bottom, we're actually tracking that override stabilization account. So at the end of year two, we'd have about $1.2 million in that reserve account. Then we again move over to 2016. The same, uh, same projections we've tried to make, both in terms of our, uh, our revenues as well as our expenditures, we would finish 2016 um, with about $58,072 uh, surplus that we would again allocate to that uh, override stabilization account, which would leave us uh, with about $1.29 million in that account. So then, once we get over to the fourth fiscal year, which would be FY 2017, again, assuming the same levels of growth in revenues, assuming the same levels of growth in terms of expenditures, we would then get to that fiscal, the end of, we would get to that fiscal year, we would then need to use about 1.276 of the override stabilization account to be able to allow us to maintain level services. It would leave us about, uh, about $13,000 surplus from that. So that's a plan whereby the $2.5 million in new revenues for our city and school operating budgets can be used not only to provide the level services that we need in FY14, uh, but by saving it and by putting it aside, we can use the extra revenue to provide level services in 15, 16, and 17. Uh, in FY 2018, you'll see that when that stabilization account runs out, we then will be back to where we started and, and having a conversation about how do we continue to provide level services. But that is the four-year plan. Uh, and in terms of what the impact of that $2.5 million override would be, uh, the average single-family home in Northampton, which is valued at $297,323, uh, would see about a $234.89 uh, uh, increase in its tax bill. Another way to think about that is the per $1,000 valuation would go up by 79 cents. So you can do the calculation based on your own property uh, value using that 0.79 cents per thousand. So that's the five-year plan that I've laid out uh, to the city council as well as to the public uh, regarding that $2.5 million uh, general operating override uh, that, the, that the residents of Northampton uh, will, will have the final decision on on June 25th. Um, in terms of that issue of, uh, of, of how long we can make the, the revenue last, it is my goal uh, to try to make that revenue last longer if possible. And that's why I've been working on several different initiatives to try to find uh, cost efficiencies in city government, uh, to really look at spending very carefully, and to make sure that we're using uh, taxpayers' dollars as efficiently as possible. Um, and one of the other th some of the other things that I highlighted, in addition to things like the health insurance savings, uh, which is going to be part of saving uh, significant money over the next several years, um, I, I gave the council an update on um, issues like our compensatory time uh, uh, liability, which was an issue in last year's budget. We've worked very hard to try to get that compensatory time liability down 
Um, we've reduced it by almost 30 percent since last year. Um, and I can report that by the end of this fiscal year, none of our employees are exceeding the caps on compensatory time use um, that they had been exceeding in the last fiscal year. Um, we've also seen very good results from the reorganization of the parking department, which we did uh, last year. Um, you may recall that I uh, eliminated the parking department as a standalone organization, uh, folded it into, uh, folded the responsibilities into two other uh, departments. Um, and one of the issues that we had been facing is our outside auditor had signaled um, several different concerns about the way it was structured and managed. And I can report that we just received our audit uh, from our outside auditor, Scanlon and Associates, um, and they have, uh, they have gone through all of the items that they had flagged in last year's audit um, and have indicated that all those previous areas of concern have been corrected. Uh, more importantly, uh, overtime in the parking division, which had been a major concern as well when we did the reorganization, we've been able to reduce overtime in that department by almost 76%. So it was a number in FY 2011 that was over $40,000. We now have that number under $10,000. So I'll be working hard over the next uh, several years to try to make sure uh, that we are finding cost savings wherever possible. And that includes looking at things like performance management, um, which is a, an initiative I'm working on called Northampton Stat, where I'm working with different city departments to collect data on how they carry out their services to see if we can find ways to do it more efficiently. Um, to new technologies like our mobile app that I talked about in a previous episode so that we can try to figure out ways uh, to deliver services to residents on these quality of life issues like potholes and trash and tree limbs uh, more efficiently. Um, I wanted to close uh, by just reading the closing paragraph of my budget message. Uh, and, and I want to say before I do that that copies of this budget, first of all, you can read the, the budget in its entirety online. It's on the home page of the city's website, www.northamptonma.gov. You can also find a copy of that uh, five-year uh, proposal that I just reviewed. That's also available online. And copies of the budget, physical copies of the budget, are also available at our two libraries, Forbes Library and Lilly Library. Um, so I hope people will take the opportunity to review the budget, uh, to give feedback to the City Council. The City Council will ultimately have to vote uh, to adopt this budget before the end of the fiscal year uh, on June 31st so that we can have a new budget in place for July 1st. So I wanted to close by just reading the closing uh, paragraph of my budget message. I must reiterate that our single greatest challenge remains the structural imbalance between increasing fixed costs and the lack of revenues to meet them. Northampton has adopted and implemented all of the local options offered to us by state government for increasing local revenues, from meals and hotel motel taxes, to the CPA, to now most recently municipal health insurance reform. I call upon our state leaders to give us more tools to increase revenues and implement efficiencies to reduce costs. If state aid to cities and towns remains at current levels and there is no political will to revisit outdated and unfair aid formulas, we must demand more local revenue authority from state government to let us control our own fiscal destiny. I remain committed to working with the City Council, the School Committee, and all city residents to seek the funding and or local revenue authority we need to adequately fund our public schools, our police and fire, our infrastructure, and other vital city programs and services. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Mayor's Report uh, and spending a little bit of time letting me uh, talk about the city budget. Uh, we'll obviously be putting together uh, future episodes of the Mayor's Report to report to you on other issues of importance to the people of Northampton. I hope you'll contact me if you have ideas uh, for subjects you'd like to hear about. Um, and I hope you'll take the opportunity again to check out this budget and to give us your feedback on it. Thank you very much for tuning into the Mayor's Report, and we'll see you next time.